In the summer of 2008, I received an invitation from my department chair to join Facebook. I didn't know much about the social network, but I decided to sign up because I envisioned interesting conversations taking place online with my colleagues. At the time, I was a special lecturer in the Department of Writing and Rhetoric at Oakland University. The year before, I had won the Excellence in Teaching Award. I felt great about my teaching, but I didn't feel a strong connection to my department or the community of teachers, scholars, and researchers who make up the discipline of rhetoric and composition. Unfortunately, my first attempts to use Facebook to get connected were unsuccessful. On September 26, 2008, I wrote that I was about to head to class to launch a semiotic analysis unit. No one responded, and I didn't write another status update until February 17, 2009. In the summer of 2009, I participated in the Digital Media and Composition Institute, also known as DMAC, at The Ohio State University. This experience was the first time I had met colleagues from around the country, and our conversation sparked a desire in me to connect with others in the discipline. Not surprisingly, my DMAC experience also influenced my writing for Facebook, starting with how I communicated to my colleagues back at Oakland University. The day before I left for DMAC, my colleague, Cornelia Pokshava, and department chair, Marshall Kitchens, let me know they expected updates about my experience. By the second day of DMAC, my colleague, Lori Ostegard, told me she wanted me to write updates on Facebook. At this point, I realized I had an audience who was interested in hearing about the equipment we were using and the projects we were composing. So I wrote status updates on a daily basis, despite the Institute's busy schedule. When DMAC was over, I came home with new skills and knowledge about digital media, new friends from around the country, and a new outlook on the potential value of Facebook. Since participating in DMAC, I spend a lot of time writing status updates about my professional life, particularly new ideas for teaching using digital media. I also share specific teaching resources and how I use them in the classroom. In addition, I often share bits of my teaching philosophy, particularly my commitment to writing with my students. Video projects have become an important part of my first year writing courses. As a result, I like to share examples of student videos on Facebook. This screenshot shows a video argument entitled A Need for Religious Tolerance. And this screenshot depicts a career video on becoming a professional dancer. In addition to posting student videos, I share my own video projects, like my career video that profiles my wife Cheryl as a kindergarten teacher, or my video argument entitled Genetically Modified Foods, Potentially Dangerous. Then there are the status updates that fall into the category of other professional stuff. I like to keep my Facebook friends in the loop of what's going on in my professional life. Whether it's recording literacy narratives for the Digital Archive of Literacy Narratives, or receiving the Kairos Teaching Award at the 2011 Computers and Writing Conference, or getting my panel on video projects in first year writing accepted for the 2012 Four C's. All of these screenshots show that many of my Facebook friends are paying attention to the things I write in my status updates, but I'd like to focus on three friends in order to show what they have to say. Dana Driscoll is a friend and colleague at Oakland University. Here's what she told me. Through your posting of student videos, assignments, ideas, and your own video work, I have been inspired to more fully integrate video arguments into my own first-year writing courses. Bump Halbretter is a friend and colleague from Michigan State University. In the summer of 2010, I learned that he was paying attention to my status updates. After attending his workshop entitled, Audiovisual Rhetoric for Writing Teachers, Bump told me, 
I'm interested in seeing how the stuff you learn today plays out in your teaching and students' work. Cheryl Ball is a friend and colleague from Illinois State University. When I ran into her at the 2011 Four C's, here's what she told me. The stuff you're posting to Facebook about what you're doing with your students is blowing me away. In An Invitation to Reflexive Sociology, Bordeaux and Wachwant present the following definition of social capital. The sum of the resources, actual or virtual, that accrue to an individual or a group by virtue of possessing a durable network of more or less institutionalized relationships of mutual acquaintance and recognition. In other words, individuals or groups gain benefits because they belong to a social network. These benefits are known as social capital and can include information, new perspectives, and opportunities. Researchers are just beginning to investigate how this sociological concept plays out in online social networks. One notable study was reported in the scholarly article, The Benefits of Facebook Friends, Social Capital and College Students' Use of Online Social Network Sites. Ellison, Steinfeld, and Lomp analyzed the survey results of 286 undergraduate students at Michigan State University and presented the following conclusion. We can definitely state that there is a positive relationship between certain kinds of Facebook use and the maintenance and creation of social capital. The screenshots I presented throughout this video support this conclusion, but I'd like to dig a bit deeper and present three examples of social capital I've gained through using Facebook. The first example is represented by this screenshot where I simply posed a question. Apple's Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro? A number of my friends responded, offering me information. The second example is where I wrote about having trouble converting video files from a DVD. Bump replied, What's the problem, Timothy? After I explained the situation, he offered me a software solution. The third example is more complex. On September 7, 2010, the Wide Research Center at Michigan State University released a white paper for a study entitled Revisualizing Composition, Mapping the Writing Lives of First-Year College Students. Since I was visiting Wide on September 13th, I read through the paper to familiarize myself with the study. I was intrigued by the findings and eager to discuss them in person. On September 10th, Bill Hart Davidson posted to a status update. An overlooked data point so far of the wide report, students value academic writing quite a lot. I decided to respond to his update, and an interesting conversation between us unfolded on his wall. Three days later, I found myself sitting in the basement of Olds Hall on MSU's campus taking part in a wide staff meeting. When the revisualizing composition study came up in the meeting's agenda, Bill asked me to share my thoughts about the study that I had posted to his wall. Fifteen minutes later, Bill and Jeff Grable invited me to join researchers around the country to discuss and implement Phase 2 of the study. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to run Phase 2 of the study at Oakland University due to funding issues. However, I learned a lot from participating in conference calls and visiting WIDE a second time to discuss the research methodology used for the study. While I might have received this opportunity regardless of my interaction on Facebook, I can't help thinking that my conversation on Bill's wall, as well as other conversations leading up to it, helped me to create and maintain social capital that opened the doors to this valuable professional experience.